everybody. Welcome again. RDA Tech Q&A. You've got questions. We've got guesses. I think that's a good tagline for us, isn't it? It, it is. It especially is. this week's questions. Oh, I had to do some digging on those. There are a couple this week that are like, ooh. Ooh. I'll be honest, one of them this week is, I could have asked this. Yeah. So... We, I, I still don't know the answer to one of them, and uh, it affects me daily, but I also don't care about <laughs> it. It's, it's, it's one of those, it affects me, I don't care, because I'm at my desk more often than not. Um, if you have questions you'd like me and Mike to tackle for you, tech-related stuff... Uh, go ahead and send those to requests at radio.air.com. I'm Nash. I do radio.air, and I have over a decade's worth of experience in tech and such. This is my producer, Mike Gearman. He has a similar background in technology. We'll be answering your questions later on tonight. But first, we've got some newsins. We have some news. Yes. And there's a story some of you may have been hearing about, some of you may have not have been hearing about. I can guarantee goddamn to you, if you do not have any background in technology, you don't give a shit. On, on at least one of our stories, yes. But you really should. Um, you may this is have, the Oracle story, I'm guessing. Yep, yeah, this is the Oracle story. Oracle versus Google! Google, 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 yes. Okay, so a short short history. Uh, Oracle is a company that is kind of well scum. Yeah. They, they were kind of well scum before they bought mm -hmm. Sun. Buying Sun didn't make them less scum. It just means they had more bandwidth to be scum in. And I say this because I've been forced to use Oracle products throughout the years, and they're a right pain in the ass to work with. So, what happened was, once upon a time, there was this wonderful company called Sun Microsystems, and they invented a programming language called Java. Java is used everywhere. It is everywhere. It's an essential part of the web, and it has been since the days of Netscape Navigator. It's what allows so many different applications. If you, if you have an app on a, embedded into a website, chances are it's powered by Java. Or at least has some Java calls in it. It might, it might have other languages tying together, but Java is there somewhere. And the Java calls part of it is the important part. Now, as time went by, or Sun started having fading fortunes, as tech giants tend to do, and they were bought out by Oracle. Now, for years, Sun had told people, yes, use Java, use it, use it, Use it freely, happy, here you go. Then Oracle purchased Sun. And changed all that shit. And one of the very first things they did was sue Google for its uses of Java's APIs. Now, what is an API? Okay, API stands for Application Programming Interface, or very similar words. I'm, right. I always mess that up. Basically, if you have functions that you want to call, you have to declare a function. You, you can't just have a function. Most languages don't allow you to have a, a function that you haven't set up ahead of time. That you haven't said, this is a function we're going to have later in the program. So you have a declaration saying, here's the name of the function, what it's going to return, and what arguments it takes. Now, the neat thing about this is someone else could theoretically Drive into your apartment. <laughs> yeah. Someone else could theoretically take that function name, that return, those variables that are sent to it, write their own version of it, maybe because they've got a better version or they've got a slightly different version, but as long as they keep the name the same, it works fine. Now, you could theoretically do this and have it return absolute garbage, too. You could say, I've taken a function that says, will give me the maximum you pass it a series of numbers, it gives you the, the maximum value of that set of numbers. And you can have it return the minimum instead, just to screw with people. But once that's quite out, no one will use your version. An API is, is, when it comes down to, it is a way for how code talks to each other. It's an essential part of programming language. Now, what Oracle is alleging 
originally alleged that APIs were patented and a court threw that out. Now they're trying to go with the idea that you can copyright an API. This is this is sort of like saying, okay, well, the court, the court, the appeals court did say API were copyrightable. Google is now saying it's fair use. There's that's the difference. This and that's already kind of a stupid ruling because that's yes. like saying gerunds are copyrightable. Uh, uh, a good way to look at it is, say you've got two different encyclopedias, and you tell someone, bring me the volume of an encyclopedia that covers goldfish. That that could be an API call. Bring me goldfish. Right. And doesn't matter which encyclopedia you go to, you're going to get information about goldfish. Uh, Sun is trying to say, no, no, Oracle. no we Oracle. own. Oracle, so Oracle is sorry. trying to Oracle say. Oracle is trying to say, we own that declaration of bring me goldfish. Right. They are saying in order to, they're, it's a matter of saying this means of communication is copyrightable. And we can make you pay us money for communicating. Now, why this is a really big deal is there are so many aspects of the internet, especially open source software that relies on Java APIs. If this stands, this could essentially bring the entirety of the open source software movement and a lot of copywritten software crashing down. This means that Windows, for example, would have to pay Oracle for certain functions. It means that Linux would have to pay Oracle for certain functions. It means that uh, any web browser, Apple, everyone would have to pay Oracle for any function derived from a Java API. And where it gets even worse is, is Basically, if you said, if the APIs are copyrightable and they're not fair use to use them, stands, it means the first person to ever write an API to do a given thing owns it for everything. And that's not just, that doesn't just cover Java. That could literally cover every single programming language in use. The rights tangle would be a nightmare. And companies would literally go under overnight simply because they can't fucking pay the kind of royalties that this would, this would basically become rent seeking Palooza. Yes. Lawyers. A new set of, a new set of copyright trolls released upon the world. Thanks to Oracle. Hopefully if, if this were to stand, I would hope that the first set of trolls would go after Oracle for, you know, and tear them down. Look what you did. Yeah, and th there's also allegations and quite firmly substantiated allegations that the only reason Oracle purchased Sun was to launch this website, this lawsuit. Yes. Uh, when, when Oracle's uh, uh, executives testified this week, uh, they said, oh, no, no, we didn't do that. Absolutely not. But whether or not a juror will believe them. I know the, the general computing, the general tech uh, uh, audience watching this really doesn't. At least if you go by comments on Ars Technica yeah. uh, and sites like that. They don't buy I'm it. I'm sure Sun has an internal, you know, you know RSS on that. Oracle has a has an Oracle fan base website sort of deal where people are going, oh no, you're doing great in this lawsuit. You're doing fantastic. Yeah, I doubt it. I really kind of doubt it. Because Oracle, what, what has Oracle done in the past 10 years? They, they've had a uh, database product they continually update and charge up the ass for. Anything new? Their update, no, nothing really, nothing that I can think of. Their database is the only thing that I've ever worked with, and it's a pain in the ass. So it's... Don't get me wrong, it's really powerful and really uh, useful when you can get it to work, but it's a pain in the ass. In all honesty, this is, this could potentially go all the way to the Supreme Court because this is, so much is riding on this, not just for Google, not just for Oracle, but for the entire software industry. So much is riding on this. 
And we're down a Supreme Court justice right now. Because Congress won't get off their ass. Fucking yippee. So this is going to be a mess for a while. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be... Uh, yeah. The jury on the case is uh, uh, out until Monday when they'll come back to hear closing arguments and begin their deliberations. So probably within the next week or so, we're going to have uh, an answer. And if it if it go if they find it, part of what's been so frustrating about this case is they've been trying to translate all this to the layman. Yes, because there's no programmers on the jury. Nope. The jury are just regular old people who have no experience with technology, and they've been trying to explain it to them. So our the hands of the entire software industry, the hands of you and me who do stuff online on the computer every single day are in the hands of 12 people who have no fucking idea how any of it works. Well, uh, that's not one juror does. Uh, <laughs> well, excuse me, potential, I'm reading, I'm reading the jury selection stuff. One potential juror had direct experience with computers, a networking manager at Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. But I don't think he, uh, oh, sorry, Oracle struck and he was their first strike. Yeah, because he actually knew how this shit worked. Funny that funny that uh let's see here a uh, few uh google struck a juror who objected to the idea of free software good strike i think on their part uh couple dismissed because they or a close relative owned stock in one of the companies yeah that makes sense one woman was dismissed because her husband was trying to sell a patent and uh, oracle and google were prospective buyers fair enough so yeah, this what this could mean is software, a lot of the software you use might be suddenly more expensive. Hold on, I've got to tell you what one of the jurors was struck for because it's hilarious. Okay. Another potential juror was questioned because he gave a pamphlet from his church to another person in the hall during a break. Warned by the judge that he wouldn't be able to proselytize during the trial, the juror responded, he wasn't able to abide by that. I serve a higher authority. There's a judge that is higher than you. That may be, said Judge Alsop, but so far he hasn't communicated with me. We're so screwed. No, that guy was dismissed. I know, but that, that's just the very fact that he was on it. Oh, for fuck's sake. We're so screwed. It's random who gets called for a jury. I mean, I've always wanted to be called for an interesting case. I've never been called for an interesting case. What's What, what this could mean is software prices go up. A oh, lot yes. of the free software that you may use, say if you use, for example, a good, wonderful example, I just had up on the screen. Let me put it up again. Um, I took it down because it was in my way. Now I put it back up again. What am I doing? This, this wonderful little piece of software I use is called uh, Paint.net. Little yeah, free, I that yeah, it's it's a free uh, photo editing software, and it doesn't cost me a dime, and it helps. Not the most me. powerful thing in the world, but it does its job. Yeah, I use it regularly for my videos and whatnot, and that could be go bye bye, because now, it it will also largely depend on the company that wrote the APIs. Some companies will obviously be more open about their API use than others, uh, and one of the things that will certainly come up in cases where companies are bought is what sort of promises the previous company made. Because when you buy a company, you're supposed to buy, abide by the promises the previous one made. Now, Sun did say, oh yeah, go ahead, use this. And now Oracle's trying to say, no, you owe us money. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that hasn't come up more in the, in the case, but maybe, maybe there's some part of it I missed where the judge goes, well, no, not really applicable. Well, let's move on to a little bit of potentially good news for the internet. Google has made a decision regarding Chrome. We'll call this the, the last nail in the coffin. Google is going to turn off Flash by default in Chrome before hey. 2017. What this means is that you will still be able to use Flash-based stuff in Google Chrome. You'll just have to say, let me use this Flash app. 
Right, you're going to have to do it deliberately. There's going to be no more auto run flash on anything. It's going to be off by default. Now, some of you may be asking, why is this a big deal? Okay, so flash, while a neat program and used in a lot of things, including uh, a lot of online games, uh, is very, very insecure. And I ads, do, especially in ads. Oh yes, I do a lot of computer security stuff at work. We have a tool we use to scan computers to say, how insecure is this? What patches do we need to apply? When I scan a, a fresh out of the box Windows uh, 10 machine, it comes back normally with, oh uh, crap, you've got an old version of uh, Adobe Reader on here, upgrade 17 versions, 17 dot versions, and you'll be good. And I'll go, okay, that's you know 10, 10 whatever things. And then I'll say, oh, you've got Flash. Here's 93 things that are wrong with Flash. Get the latest version of Flash and 82 of these will go away. The other 11 will still be there because yeah. it's that buggy. Adobe Flash has been one of the biggest security holes on the internet for, what, a decade now? Easily? Easily a decade. It is the vector by which so much malware gets transmitted to PCs across the internet. Now, of course, as time's gone by, there have been more and more vectors, but Flash is still the good old reliable standard. It's, yep. Is Twitch affected by JavaScript? Eh, lots of things are affected by JavaScript, but... We're talking about flash by, by right javascript now. or flash we're talking about flash now keep up try and keep up try and keep up now however google is making the exemptions for the following domains which will still run flash as normal for example youtube yes uh so, so i guess the question they were asking is twitch affected by flash well yes twitch will be affected by flash until such time as they convert to HTML5 yes. based streaming video. HTML5 is essentially not, it, it's the replacement for Flash that's not even a plugin. HTML5. And a bunch of other things. And a bunch of other things. It's it's not a plugin. It's, it's a basic function of, that's part of every modern browser. It works without a plugin. It's just an inherent part. Yes. Uh, someone in the, in the chat channel is saying it'd be nice to be able to submit safe sites to Google for automatic whitelisting. You can't exactly do that on an individual basis. On a corporate basis, your corporation will be able to set up whitelisted Flash sites, even with Chrome, to say, yes, support Flash on this site. Because a lot of, even a lot of corporations have internal Flash uses for various things. Yeah. So that's part of the thing there's a whitelisting for and I don't know if, if it's possible to do it on a personal level maybe I haven't looked in depth on the settings I'm going to only worry about it when the time wasting flash games I play on occasion no longer work at the end of the day what this is going to help push people toward if flash is no longer enabled by default on arguably the most popular browser online right now sorry Microsoft nobody uses edge you, you put it as the... No one's using Ed, it. Edge sucks. Edge kind of Ed, sucks. Edge, Edge sucks because there's no plugins for it. Or extensions or anything yes. like that. Ed, Edge Edge sucks. No no one uses Edge. I'm sorry. It's Stop trying to make Edge a thing, Microsoft. Edge is never going to be a thing. Um, by making Flash disabled by default on one of the most... On the most popular browser online... It's going to force sites to migrate away from Flash because people yes. will have to choose to click, click, make, thing, make things work. It's going to be interesting to see all the ad sites go, oh, they have to click to view our ads now. They'll, they'll convert very quickly. And the hope is by converting their Flash ads to HTML5, they will be, fingers crossed, more secure. And they will no longer be the vector for getting bullshit infected especially oh god i hate the one i fucking hate dealing with is your computer is infected call this number now to help get this off your computer 
Ah, uh, that's what pop-up blockers are for. Yeah, don't, don't, if you ever see a website that comes up and says, your computer has an infection, contact us Ignore now. Ignore it. It's a lie. It's lying Ignore to you. Blacklisted if you know how. It's, it's, it's bullshit. It's, it's it a is lying. Scam it's lying to you. It's a dirty liar. Um, this, however, is going to push Flash further to the niche and may try to force some migration to HTML5, which we should already be at. Realistically, it's going to kill Flash. Fingers crossed, because god damn. So I actually have something to say about that. What? Uh, Flash isn't pining, it's passed on. <laughs> this plugin is no more. It has ceased to be. It has expired. The plugin has gone to meet its maker. It is a late plugin. <laughs> It's a stiff, bereft of updates, it rests in peace. If it hadn't been nailed to the browser, it'd be pushing up daisies. It's rung down the curtain and joined the choir invisible. It is an X format. <laughs> yeah, to go to the Monty Python there. You know, I half, took a little time to, re to write that up. Half the people who are going to see this have never, ever, ever seen Monty Python. They've never seen the Dead Parrot sketch. They've never seen the Dead Parrot sketch. They probably never will. Okay, hold on. Audience? When the show is done, go on to YouTube and look up <laughs> Dead Parrot Sketch. It's hilarious. Uh, yeah, okay, Mike memorized that, but you've never seen Toy Story. I didn't memorize that. I have it written in a notepad <laughs> on my screen. I could have memorized it. It's easy enough. Finally, tonight, there is one thing about consoles that I loathe and actively drives me away from ever using consoles for any reason. And that is format exclusives. I hate this bullshit. I may have been interested in purchasing a PC copy of The Last of Us. Big game, really great game, really great reviews. I may have been have gotten that game. You know why I didn't? PS4 exclusive. PS3 uh, yeah. exclusive, then PS4 exclusive. Uncharted. Never played it. Know why? PlayStation exclusive. And you don't want to buy a stack of, you know, just have every console imaginable just to play games that look interesting. Right. And it's it, it's it's a fucking ridiculous... One of the things about PC games is you play, just fucking play. You can play it on any hardware. It doesn't say, oh, if you're running this video card, you can't play this game. It's, it says, well, if this video card's too old, you can't play it. But it's not like, yeah. no, no, you're running an AMD video card. You have to have an NVIDIA card. To... No, no, that's that's been entirely against the philosophy. One game tried that once and it didn't work very well for Didn't me. work very well. Well, now VR is becoming the thing. Virtual reality and the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Is that what it's called? The Vive? Vive or Vive? No, Vive. Vive. The Vive. That's a horrible name. Why did they call it that? Um, the HTC Vive. It's it, 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 This is the next big thing in gaming. Unfortunately... I won't be participating in its current form, and the reason why, they are definitely not going with the platform openness. Agnosticism. Yeah. What happened was this. Um, Oculus and Vive are competing on, on the space, and they have plenty of games are available. Some don't work with the Vive. So what someone did was they wrote a little patch and it allowed you to use your HTC Vive to play Oculus games. You still had to buy the game. You still had to actually yeah. purchase the game. It's just you could use it on the hardware of your choice. And historically, for, for game systems like this, the, the system itself might be a little bit of a loss leader because they make it back up on the games. Historically. Well, what happened was um, Oculus wrote an update to their system saying you cannot. It, it locked off that, that patch, and they reiterated, you have to play Oculus games on Oculus hardware. We will not allow you 
to use different hardware. Um, and the, but this was a promise that they had said, oh, we will allow you to use different hardware. Yeah, the quote was, if customers buy a game from us, this comes from um, Palmer Lucky, the CEO. The CEO. If customers buy a game from us, I don't care if they mod it to run on whatever they want. So I've said a million times, and counter to the current circle jerk, love this guy, our goal is not to profit by locking people to only our hardware. If it was, why in the world would we be supporting Gear VR and talking with other headset makers? That is a direct quote from the CEO before they lock down the... Uh, now, this this is honestly... I, I, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I'm not going to invest my money in this. Yeah. Well, the Revive team has already responded to this. Uh, has pledged to circumvent, circumvent the Oculus app's uh, latest block, but said it will be challenging to circumvent this check while keeping the DM, DRM intact. I think they can do it, though. I think they can pull it off. It's going to be one of those little arms race kinds of things. Console PCs are not consoles. They're a different kind of player with a different kind of philosophy, and it's mainly an open philosophy. We like modding. We like changing stuff. We like playing our stuff how we want, where we want, when we want. We are not... Behold- Even at work when we're not supposed to be. Especially at work when we're not supposed to be. We're not beholden to a single platform. We'll play on Linux, we'll play on Windows, but we do want to use our hardware our way. That's, that's just been one of the spirits of PC gaming since the beginning and all the way to now. Some companies have been really smart about this and have embraced it. Uh, and and Steam, even though Steam is kind of a form of DRM, is still very open and very good to its customers to the point of being non-intrusive, non-invasive, and doesn't you know feel constricting. Whereas consoles, one of the big problems I have with consoles is. You have to play it on this. No, why? It'll work. I, I guarantee you. Every it is it's workable on, on other hardware. They just don't want to. Right. They just do not wish to. Or in the case of Warner Brothers, do not have the brain capacity to make that happen. What the shit? Fucking Batman. What? What the <laughs> fuck was that? Seriously. They're like, we'll fix this. No, we won't fix this. Mortal Kombat. Ah, fuck it. And it's... This is... I I cannot get behind... Especially this... We're talking $600 a pop for the fucking headset. And the price will come down eventually, but uh, still, it's... it's, I know people are working on, on stuff involving Oculus. Uh, I, I put in a, a request to them. Uh, can someone develop a game where you get to throw people downstairs and, and skin them to look like people you don't like? Not for me, mind you. Uh, someone else asked, and I said I'd pass it along. Okay. It's true. <sighs> but in all ser- this is one of those things that... I am a PC gamer, and this is tr- this turns me off. Just yeah, right, no, under- completely understandably, because it's 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 lock in for the sake of lock in. It's not it's not going to make someone more likely to buy the games, more and likely to buy the headset. What has always happened with PC is that the competitiveness between hardware makers has always helped keep prices down. It is forced by being platform agnostic by being able to play anything you want on any hardware you want it's start it's kept prices down now since amd has kind of died yo know, it is fucked the dog it has fucked the dog oh did you see the 1080 benchmarks the gtx 1080 benchmarks no i didn't 60 percent faster than the 980 ti But uh, with benchmarks, of course, it is it is a you know standardized standardized known set of tests. So 
I'd rather see real world tests. Still, that's nasty. That is yeah. that that is and even if AMD's Polaris, even if AMD's has come up with a slam dunk with the Polaris, do you know what Nvidia will do? They still have the 1080 Ti up their sleeve. They would have to come up with something that is is better than the 1080 Ti, at least equal to the, what the 1080 Ti is projected to be. Oh, this the, it's it's just bad. It's bad AMD bad news. Bad news bears for AMD and their CPUs. Let's not even talk about their fucking CPUs. I, I know what's going to happen with AMD. AMD is going to not be the, the the video card you use for gaming much longer. It's going to be the video card you use in office environments. Because right now, it'll be much cheaper than NVIDIA. No, we're going off on a slight tangent here. Right now, you know what AMD is holding on to by their fingernails? The roof ledge? The consoles. Hmm. The Wii U, the PS4, and the X-Bone all run AMD. It's a good niche to have, but... Uh, Intel uh, is... Have you seen... But have you seen Intel's integrated... GPU, they keep getting progressively better and better, and they are nipping at AMD's heels to the point that come the next generation of consoles, Intel might be able to edge AMD out in the bidding. And that'll be bad news bears for everybody. Ooh. So... <laughs> also, oh, speaking of Intel, just small side notes we're going to hear. Uh, Intel has announced their next, um, well, leaks have come and Intel's more or less not really denied them. The next enthusiast level of processors, the, I believe it's called the 69s, it's not the 6960X, I think it's like the 6900X or something like that, but the next uh, enthusiast level CPU a 10 core consumer CPU. Uh, does it use the same socket as the i7? Uh, it uses the same as the 5900 series. So it's using the LGA 2011 3. One moment whilst I check what I have. You don't have it. Son of a bitch. You told, I promise you, unless you are running. The, the, what was it, Broadwell? Not, was that, was it Broad? Yeah, it was Broadwell E. Unless you're running Broadwell E, you're not using it. Uh, but 10 core CP, 10 core consumer CPU, 25 megabytes of uh, cache RAM. Guess what price it is? $2,500. $1,500. Fifteen hundred for just the CPU. That's not bad, given ten cores. No, ten core. Given what it says, spec. I know people who would do buy that for their home. <sighs> they would eat ramen for the next six months. But uh, I have a six core, and the sad thing is, though, I have a six core that is from three years old now, and it's still. Pretty much cutting edge. Yeah. Eight core uh, i7 930. Nine th the 930? Wow, that's that's a ways back. Wait, you couldn't have had an eight core 930. Oh, hey, I don't know what it's, it says 930. I don't mention You have a four core with hyper threading. That may be possible. That's what makes it eight cores. Okay. That's what shows up in, in Windows is eight cores. Okay. I bought the, the best one I could afford at the time. Because the first consumer 8-core was last year. Now we have the first consumer 10-core this year. Okay. And they're ridiculously fucking... Is there going to be a price drop on the 8-core? They'll probably drop at 50. <laughs> a little bit, but... Yeah, they'll, they'll, drop it, they'll drop it that much. The problem is AM, Intel has no real reason to drop it because AMD has nothing whatsoever to compete with them in that in that they can't do shit. 
They have nothing resembling competition in that department. Okay, so that well, that's enough news and and bitching about companies <laughs> and shit. It is now time to answer your questions. We have a couple this week that are just ugh, ugh, ugh. Do we want to start with the iPhone one? Sure. Let's get this son of a bitch out of the way. It's like pulling fucking teeth on this one. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, Alex C. sent us this question. So, recently updated my iPhone to whatever version it's on now, and my email stopped getting auto-updated when I wasn't actually in the mail app. It's a problem because I have to deal with people who send me time-sensitive things and I don't notice I have email because I'm not notified and I've become too used to hearing my phone beep. Phone is an iPhone 6 and it's the only Apple device I have. Any tips? Well, you're not alone. Other people have had this problem after updating to newer versions of iOS. And I believe this is the 8. We're, we're in the 8 area right now. Is it iPhone 6? Yes. Uh, let me see which one I have. Not the 6. I'm willing to bet it's not the 6. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, I'm on... Whatever this one is. <laughs> what the fuck ever this fucking thing is. Real it's nice tech phone. dude. It's my work phone. I don't do much with it. Yeah, you don't give a shit about... Yeah, it's like, they give you uh, an uh, iPhone. The, the iOS version is 9.3.2. Um... But yeah, so, it's, it's, it's an issue with a number of things. I haven't found a workaround yet, and I'm the IT guy from my department who's supposed to find the workaround because it's affecting our management team as well. I will tell you to go through, the first thing to check would be mail settings under mail, calendars, and contacts. You need to check there and find the fetch new mail option. See if it's been disabled. Then, you need to, um, let's see. The notifications are the big problem. Some people say this resolves after updating again. Some people did not. Um, go, here's another, another thing to check. Check settings, cellular roaming, voice and data. Make sure that's enabled. I know it's kind of seems kind of dumb, but um, also make sure your push settings are turned on. Okay, yes, yes. Push should be on and fetch. Uh, mine is currently set to manually, which is probably why it's, I just now noticed this. I didn't even care to look very in-depth. You can change it to every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, hourly, or manually. Yeah. Uh, whichever setting works best for you. So check your fetch settings, make sure it's turned to um, automatic. Not manual. Yeah, change it to every 15 minutes. That may solve the notification problems. It's, it's one of, the, and also I do believe Apple released another iOS update that fixed some bugs. So try and check those out again, try and update again. One of the most frustrating things about Apple products is that this whole it just works philosophy is partly due to the fact that Apple locks down so much shit that people do not know how to go in and tinker and adjust and they have no inclination to do these things. Because it was working fine. Yeah, Apple has trained people, especially via their customer support. I speak from experience. Apple has trained people to do this. Fix it! Fix it! Please fix it! So it's... Uh, and they make it very hard for independent people who may be able to fix it to fix it because they lock down so much because they want you to come to Apple support. So it's yes. very fucking frustrating, especially for someone like Mike who has to integrate this shit into their work environment. And Apple is geared toward, oh, poor sweetie, let me hold your hand and fix it. So, and you're sitting over there, look, just tell me what the fuck to do. I can so do I, 
tell everyone else. Yeah. Although I, I must say, even telling everyone else doesn't always work because I sent out a, uh, uh, an email this week of, this is how you update your email information to say what branch you work for. I can't change it. You must do it. Three days later, hey, my branch is wrong. Can you fix this? No. No, I did you not see the full mass email I sent out. So anyway, our, our, my best recommendation is check your fetch settings. Um, uh, another place to look is, uh, uh, where was it? Cellular, your settings, cellular roaming, voice and data. Make sure this is enabled, but that might chew up, you know, roaming data can chew up your, your, your uh, bank balance quite quickly. If you're if you're not in in network, and I I hate troubleshooting shit fucking Apple shit. I hate it so much. I want to get the other troubleshooting Apple shit out of the way. <laughs> Shall we do that? Because we sure. have another one. This fucking Christ. Two things in one week. Fuck. You know why they sent us Apple stuff, right? Why? We have beards. Ahoy, Nash and Mike. My name is John, and I've been having Ahoy? an issue. Ahoy. Ahoy, hoy. My name is John. I've been having issues with iTunes. I'm running iTunes 12.3.3.17 on a Windows 8 system. When I go There's your first mistake. <laughs> when I go to burn a CD, iTunes crashes. I first checked to make sure my disk drive was still okay. That was not the problem. I'll get back to that in a second iTunes was able to recognize and import CDs, but when I went to burn a CD, once again, crashed. I also tried running diagnostics through iTunes, and that also made it crash. I was trying to make sure my drivers were up to date after a lengthy updating process, still no dice. Is there anything I can do about it, or should I just give up hope and try a different solution? Okay, until you said uh, I was running diagnostics and it crashed, I was thinking that it might be a uh, an audio format that iTunes can't natively can't convert to CD, uh, which there are a couple. Uh, It'll read them just fine. It won't convert them, though. Well, the first thing I recommend doing, let's rule out iTunes as the problem. Uh, and by doing that, what I want you to do is go into any other program, uh, even basic Windows, Windows Explorer, and burn a CD with that. Burn it doesn't need to be a music CD. Right. Data CD will work fine. Burn a different CD. And find out if your DVD CD burner is working properly in the first place. Because this is something... So I've done it too. I've been like, why won't this fucking work? And I've tried working a piece of hardware in a single application. And I'm like, what's wrong with this application? Nothing. It's the hardware's busted. I've had this happen with printers before. The, hard, oh, yeah. the hardware's busted. I'm just not understanding that because I'm trying to do it this one specific way. So the first thing to do is use a different application to burn a CD. Now, I don't know if that's what you did when you said you checked to make your, sure your disk drive was still okay. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but I'm saying yeah. it just... Now, you, you, you said it was able to read and, and import. There is significant functionality difference between reading and writing. So yeah. it can read it could read just fine, but because of something else, possibly a slightly corrupted driver that it's not recognizing or something, it's just unable to write. Yeah, the laser does different things between reading and writing. It's one burns, the other just runs a little optical scan looking for bumps. That's a very simplistic way of describing how a CD reader works. But that's what it does. It's 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 got a laser and it's it's looking for dips, highs and lows. Highs and lows. That's all it's so it's it's a very complicated record player. Um so the first thing I would do is verify that your CD burner works at all. That that's the first thing. Those th and those things are one of the aspects of a computer that do actually die. Why? Moving parts. Any part of a computer that has moving parts, be it your fan, your drives, your power supply, anything that relies on little motors spinning around are some of the first things to die on a computer. Just because moving parts, it's friction, it's physics, it's heat, it's all sorts of shit, 
those tend to die first. That's why hard drives die all the time. Some little moving component just goes, ah, oh, SpaghettiOs, and pfft, you're done. That happens all the time. Um, so that's the first thing. Now, after that, let's get into the nuts and fucking bolts of fucking iTunes. Oh, God, help me. I fucking hate iTunes. I fucking hate iTunes. And I, I, I hate it because he's having to use it to burn his CDs in this case. Because iTunes locks everything into its little ecosystem. So you can't freely use your... You, you can't use a different program to burn those iTunes songs because they're all locked in. Um, One of the first things I would do pain in the ass though it may be is since you've done diagnostics all the other things i would uninstall the fuck out of that motherfucker and then i would put it back and let's see is there an itunes cleaner there might be for windows or uninstaller something yeah, iTunes uninstall tool or whatnot. Well, no, just from from Apple itself, of course. I would uninstall iTunes and reinstall it fresh. Beyond that... Well, we, we did leave out sort of a step. Go ahead. Okay, and this is just a step I would try, uh, is finding another music burning software uh, program and just making sure that okay we burn a data cd now let's try to burn a music cd and use the same tracks that you wanted to use from uh, itunes and if it will convert them of course and see if that does anything different part of it kind of says i my gut is saying that drive because every time you try to do something burning wise with that drive it dies Good news is drives are cheap as shit. You can get a new new burner drive for like twenty bucks these days, and it's an easy swap. Um, this is true. But after that, I would try uninstalling and reinstalling, and if that doesn't work, I hate saying this. You may have to contact Apple because that's one of those fidgety little weird website. You didn't we didn't get any error. You didn't give us any of the error messages you were getting, so we can't track those down. If you'd like to send us any of the error messages you got, send those to us, and maybe we'll be able to give you something more specific. But first things first, check and verify your, your CD drive is burning in the first place. So, just just saying that that should be your first step. Fuck, I hate Apple! Fucking hate Apple! All right, let's see. Um... Let's go from one DVD drive problem to another DVD drive problem. Okay. Okay, it's from Robert. He says, My ma'am, ma'am, my ma'am. I'm wondering if he misspelled my mom or if this is like saying my grandma, but he's not in America. So I don't know which, but my ma'am has an old computer running Vista 32-bit. <whistles> Owie. With a built-in Pioneer DVD RW DVD KO6RS ATA drive. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Device manager says it's a problem with the drivers, probably corrupted. She doesn't have the internet, so I had to download the required drivers, but I try to update them. The device manager insists the most recent versions are installed and won't use the ones I've downloaded. There are a way to force it to use the drivers I've downloaded rather than the ones that it insists on using, even though they don't work. Absolutely, there is. Okay. Uh, well, the easy way would be just to right-click on the existing device and say, uninstall driver. Yeah. And then install the new driver in its place. Now, sometimes that doesn't always work. It does, it may work. Um, I've noticed when you've done this, with, with I, I've had to do this a lot with creative hardware, creative Sound Blaster hardware. Fuck, they are annoying about drivers. I've had to use aftermarket drivers to get their shit working. What it will do is it will, it will you'll tell it to go to the driver that you have downloaded, and it will still say, 
no, nah, the most the best drivers are already installed. I ain't gonna use these. I ain't even after uninstalling? Even after uninstalling. I ain't gonna use these. I'm gonna use these. What you gonna do? Huh? Huh? Come at In me, bro. In case you, you probably have to dig deep into the registry, excuse me, not registry, into the system 32 folder to find the driver store. Um, another way of doing, to tricking it is to delete the device entirely from device manager and then tell device manager to scan for new hardware. This will start things over. This will pretty much go, it's a reset for device manager. If you delete it from device manager and then tell it to scan again, it will say, I found this device. Now it may try to automatically install a driver. It may ask you for a driver. If it does do the automa automatically installing the driver, try to manually install a driver again, right click on it in device manager, choose update the driver. And then instead of saying search for one, say browse, I have point to your driver, specific location and point to that location. That's how you force it to pick what you want. Now, if it's still not, I, I, ugh, that ATA, ugh, ugh. You can still buy those drives. Ugh, ugh, the big ass ribbon came off. Ugh. Now I don't know if this system, uh, because we don't have the uh, the make and model of the system. I don't know if this one has, uh, um, primary, secondary, things like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, uh, you have SATA because I think this is, a, this, is this an ID? Let me double check. Because ATA is IDE, SATA is SATA. Let me look this up. Oh, it's an 8X. Oh, ooh. That's a slimline model too, isn't it? Wait. What? What the hell? I can't. That doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. Because I searched it, and the device that came up was this. It's a notebook one, yeah. No, it uses an IDE connector, but it's a notebook IDE connector. Yeah, unless he didn't mention that this was a, uh, that this may have been a notebook PC. No, it doesn't say one way or the other. Oh. So it sounds like it is. Oh, it's a notebook PC. Oh. Oh shit, son! There ain't no replacing that. Well, no, you could get you could get a replace if it if it's the drive. Uh, one thing I would check: a lot of notebook drives of that type are removable. Yeah. If if it is, remove it. Just blow some air in there real quick, you know, not breath, Canned obviously. Air. Canned air. And, and and push it back in. It may have just gotten slightly disconnected, and that's why it's not working. Yeah. You see that a lot with older notebook stuff. Yeah, maybe, maybe try that, but... Ugh. Alternately, if it is, again, if it's removable, uh, some of them aren't. Depends on how the case is built. Um, not, well, not easily removable, let's put it that way. Uh, if it if that doesn't work and you can replace it, you might just see that if you can pick up a new one, same model, plug it in, and see if it if it works. It could just be that the drive has gone south on you. Uh, yeah, if we're talking a Vista thirty two bit, that's kind of getting up there. Yeah, I mean, Amazon only has them used, and it looks like twelve dollar, no thirteen dollars. Uh, but I'm sure you can find them somewhere else. Vista 32-bit, that would be what, 2006, 2007? Sounds right. Yeah, that would, that's a that's a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It may be time to look into new computer. I know that's that's not one of those things you just go, okay, I'll go buy a new computer. It's not just something you can go run do, but especially with notebooks of that age, they're gonna start showing their age. That's sadly one of the, the side effects of notebooks, and they are so hard to find, because you have to find 
the parts from the manufacturer or similar compatible ones, and they are not easy to get into. I will say CD drives tend to be easier. They normally, at, at most, I've always seen CDs are held in with one screw, and then you just slide yeah. it out. So uh, they're one the of the things, of course, if you start to start digging in and working on this thing, um, back up your mam's data because she'll never forgive you if you delete accidentally delete all her uh, recipes. Oh yeah, she'll beat you with a spoon. She'll, she'll beat you. Uh, okay, one more tonight. This one comes to us from Annabelle. Hi, Nash and Mike. My question is, what is a good gaming PC and the price I might have to pay for one? Looking for a good gaming PC as a gift for my boyfriend, who's an avid gamer. I don't know shit about gaming. I have no idea what to look for. Thank you so much for your help. Okay, Annabelle. Okay, so my guess from this is she's not in the build your own. Right. So we're looking normally, for an out-of-the-box solution. Normally, when we're asked for this sort of question, our recommendation is build it yourself. Uh, because it's cheaper. You get more for your money and it's more customizable. However, in this case, it's one of those, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, help. So, if you're buying a gaming PC for someone else, what's a good baseline price we could we could talk about here for, let, let's say a mid-range gaming PC? You're probably looking at anywhere from uh, one to one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen. I, I would be. I would be more willing to say seven fifty to a thousand. Yeah, you can probably get okay mid range. Yeah, you can probably get something there. Your high range name brand funky case is gonna yeah. is gonna run you fifteen hundred to three thousand. Um, if you're spending three thousand on your boyfriend, he better be worth it. Better goddamn be worth it. Shit. Uh, again, now add about twenty-five to thirty percent to that if you're going laptop over desktop. Yeah, I which I would not recommend unless you absolutely have to, because yeah. Um, now a lot of people would would buck up and say, "Oh, Alienware, go ahead with Alienware." Well, I am not as big you're, a tremendous fan of Alienware. With Alienware, you're paying about a seventy percent premium. For the Alienware name, yeah, they they really really the the, the name is. Uh, um, I have heard a lot of good things about the Republic of Gaming systems from Asus. Even though Asus, Asus are Republic of Gaming, very good game, uh, very good systems. Even though there is one downside to this motherfucker, and that is. Look at this fucking case. Look at it. Look at it. Look at that fucking funky ass case. Is this the uh, octa sort of hexagonal one? Yeah, what the shit is that? Like I said, you're. Oh, that one. Okay, I was thinking of a different one. I look at that and my, my inner builder just. my heart sinks. Because I know, I just know, that replacing anything in that son of a bitch is going to be a pain in the ass. Um, it, it's, yeah, let, let's do a 360 product view. Holy shit. Well, okay, you could probably do the, 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 the graphics card. That's about the only thing you'll be able to replace in that son of a bitch. But, um... That thing would look wouldn't look out of place in the Mordor skydive skyline. Yeah, Will Jr. Yeah, seriously. Um, the do you have an idea, you have an idea of the difference between uh, uh, Alienware and say Asus? Uh, I'm looking at relatively similar computers uh, on Newegg right now. Uh -huh. uh, the, the main difference between one of the non-Alienware one, the Asus one, has uh, eight gig of RAM versus uh, sixteen gig of RAM for the uh, Alienware, uh, but RAM is easy to add to and relatively cheap. Uh, similarly spec across the board, the Asus One is seventeen hundred dollars. The Alienware is three thirty one hundred dollars. That's not worth that name is and a funky case. Don't get me wrong, funky case. Um, but not worth the price. I would look at this one. The Asus G twenty A 
um, with the GTX 960 option. And I found that popped up on Amazon for $919 with free shipping. So that's 920 bucks. It's a Core i7, which is, that's more than you need for gaming. But that, that's, that's pretty much the, the better end of what Intel offers, is the i7 series. So it's a Core i7 with a GTX 960 from NVIDIA, which is a very robust uh, graphics card, and it's almost current right now. It's kind of getting edged out by the 1000 series, but the 960 is still pretty current. Um, it's got eight gigs of RAM to start with. It's got a one terabyte hybrid drive. Not the best. I would go with an SSD myself, but if you, like, again, this is not something, you don't know what to, how to build it. I respect that. I can't fix a car. You might know how to fix a car, Annabelle. I don't know. So I respect that you don't know how to build this shit. I respect that. In this case, I would... This is the one I would recommend based mainly because of feedback I've heard, reviews I've read, overall and the hardware and the price. Also, I use Asus for my router. Uh, Asus, 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 I hate, I can't pronounce the fucking thing right. It's like McAfee. McAfee? McAfee. McAfee. One of those three. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> He's running for president, by the way. God help us all. Libertarian Party. Of course he is, because, you know, and you know what? He's the more reasonable option than Donald Trump. He's been on fucking meth, and he's the more reasonable option. Um, but I, I would recommend this one based on reviews I've read, based on price, based price to performance ratio. That's something we talk about a lot in computers. It's how much you're spending for it versus how much you'll get in terms of power and ability. It's the price performance. And in this case, it's less expensive than Alienware. It's not nearly as trumped up, even though it does have that funky looking goddamn RoboBorg case. Um, that's the one I would go with. If I didn't know shit about building a PC for price and whatnot, and a thousand dollars, that is about what, you know what? Even if you built it yourself, that's about what you'd end up spending on a good mid-high range. Well, I think you can get away with 700 on a mid-range. But you're, in this case, you're paying the premium for someone else to build the fucking thing. And you get warranty support, which is lovely to have. Indeed. So that's the one I would go for. It's $1,000. He better fucking appreciate that shit. You may, you may want to give the, the model name again. Yes, that's the Asus... Asus, Asus G20A, G20A, um, and get it with the GTX 960 option. That's the more recent video card. Um, you want to get the most recent video card you can on this, so. He better fucking appreciate this shit, Annabelle. That's a thousand dollars, Annabelle. He better appreciate the fuck out of that shit. And if he doesn't, you hit him with a spoon, Annabelle. Just like Robert's ma'am. Everybody, you hit him with a spoon. That That's the best solution. Wooden spoon. So, yeah. That would be my... Do you have any anything else, any other recommendations? No, no, very similar, I would say. Um, uh, check, but, you know, look around for... Pro, look around, uh, you know, Newegg might have it a little cheaper or might have a, a, a package going. Um, so, look around. But that... That, if nothing else, I would say take that spec line and use that as a baseline for what you should get. Yeah. I, I'd say about even $1,000, and even for that, that's, pretty, that's a pretty decent price for what you're getting on that system. Now, not a lot of upgradability, but if you're just going for a gaming PC, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'd steer away from Alienware, because like Mike said, you're paying for the name. And the glowy little alien head on the fucking... You're paying for that. You're I'm not, not even sure they put that on there anymore. What? Then what's the... I know, they put, I know they put the alien head on there. I don't know if they have it light up anymore. What? What? Well, I haven't owned an Alienware computer in years, so... Uh, you, you hear this shit, Grady? They don't put the alien on the Alienware anymore. Do you, do you hear this? Well, they might. I just don't know. 
Can you believe this shit? My cat cannot believe this shit. Grady's a very cynical cat. He's a very cynical cat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us for another RDA Tech Q&A. If you have questions for Mike and myself, send those to request at radiodeadair.com. We'll be back in two weeks. We'll attempt to get to those then. In the meanwhile, good night, everyone.